Hello everyone, this is Rick and welcome to Astral Club. This is higher level astral projection. Before we get started, I want to mention Patreon. If you'd like to support this channel on Patreon, become a patron, you get no commercials, uh, emails where we can talk back and forth. You can share your experiences with me and advanced videos on Sunday. If you're interested, there is a link in the description. Next up, private lessons if you'd like to learn to astral project or you're someone who does astral project but you want to improve the quantity and quality of your projections, I'd be glad to help you. You'll find an email in the description where you can request more information along, of course, with that link to Patreon. Let's get started. Many of the astral projections that I've discussed have been in the lower levels of the astral. It's a natural place to talk about because typically when one leaves their body, you go up to a level that is slightly above the physical. Uh, so you're in the lower astral. It requires uh, will to raise your vibrational level to higher levels. The higher you go, the more will is required. And more than just will, you have to raise your vibratory level. There's a variety of ways to do that, but I always use, I think of something that brings me joy or I think of pure love uh, for someone, uh, like for instance, a, a family member or my daughter, and that causes my uh, vibrational level to rise higher and higher. If you're not high enough, you either A, won't get to that highest level of the astral that you're trying to get to, or B, you won't be able to exist there long because you will be dramatically out of sync with the vibrational level. And it will, you'll find yourself in an extremely uncomfortable situation. The closest I can describe it to something that we can all identify to in the physical is imagine suddenly finding yourself under an extraordinarily hot sun that was just beating down on you and essentially burning your entire body. It's, it's a very unpleasant experience and you have a very short period of time to adjust your vibrational level or you're just gonna be kicked out of that particular area of the astral. I have had a number of trips to medium and higher astral. And the higher you go in the astral, the harder it is to really describe in modern English what it is you see. I found an entry in Robert Bruce's book, Astral Dynamics, that is very reminiscent of some of the experiences that I've had. So I'd like to share two excerpts from his book that I think very nicely encapsulates what I experienced and it's written in a very poetic way, which uh, I found attractive. So I figured, well, rather than essentially try to duplicate it with my own notes, why not just uh, read this to you to give you a good idea of what is experienced in this nosebleed territory of the astral. He starts, I fly over a rainbow, uh, rainbow bridge and float along an iridescent river until I arrive at a shore of pulsating light. The symbol of um, astral club that I use for these, uh, for these podcasts is... It's like a rainbow bridge um, through that yellow um, that yellow area that I associate with going to the higher astral. And that's why I ended up using it uh, because it was the closest thing I could find that was very visual to what crossing the rainbow bridge was like. There was mind blowing varieties of indescribable color around most not usually found even in the higher astral planes. Thoughts appear and disappear as solid kaleidoscopic 
uh, crystalline patterns of living light and sound, sparkling vivid imagery exploding like fireworks inside my mind's eye. Think about that for a second. That's a lot of stimulation. If you are not vibrating highly enough, it's like someone flashed huge amounts of stimulation in all of your senses, just overloading you to the point where it'd be painful to remain. So that's why it's extremely uh, necessary for you to uh, ensure that your vibrational level is high enough or else you won't be able to stand just the extreme amount of uh, stimuli that is being hurled at your senses. Now, once you adjust to it, you essentially become part of that level. You're no longer experiencing this, uh, these harsh lights or whatever, uh, bombarding you and feelings and music. And you become part of the overall symphony part, become one of the chairs in the orchestra. Uh, you know, it's no longer outside of you, assaulting you, but you become part of the overall uh, world that exists in that very uh, high level of the astral. A brief walk through strobing fields under sparkling skies, raining incandescent streamers of ideas, it yields tantalizing glimpses of higher abstract workings of consciousness. Uh, at that level, thought transfers to uh, creativity and, and creation instantly. A stroll through an ever-growing forest of crystalline structures in a constant state of creative flux uh, feed or fed his hungry imagination, and, I, and he felt himself swelling greatly in size. Looking to the sky... Uh, he fell forward, or, or upward rather, into a flickering maelstrom of gleaming violet light. And I experienced that too, specifically. More and more abstract it all becomes, swiftly compounding with utterly incredible complexities, ever-changing shapes, colors, and sounds. Sweet music fills the air, and I heard just some of the most unearthly music uh, that, that I've ever heard in my life. And it was more than just music, like you hear it through your ears. It vibrated throughout your entire being. And you felt the music. And as you flowed with it, it took you on a journey through thought and emotion. It, it was just wondrous. Um, I don't think mortal ears could have possibly even dealt with the, uh, the level, the high level of stimulation here. Uh, they weren't designed for that. Uh, uh, your physical ears are very crude instruments that would be unable to truly appreciate the complexity of sounds, emotions, light, that, that, that was just all blended together in this evolving sim symphony, a uh, symphony. I don't know what's wrong with me today. This ever-evolving symphony. And you are now part of it and you are partially creating it. And all of this was extremely compelling to me. I felt at home. I felt like I had arrived somewhere that I had long missed. Um, it, was, it could become painful because as you stay there longer and longer, it was harder and harder for me, and I think for him too, to maintain that higher level of vibration when you're so used to existing in the physical. It was just extremely difficult to maintain it. So that was one experience that he had, and it was very reminiscent of uh, what I experienced. He had some other things that I didn't necessarily experience myself, so I'm not going to get into them. But there was another experience that he had that I thought also explained very well what I had previously experienced. And this was, or he called it, the Summerland. And I think it's as good a title as any other. And some people might call this heaven. Um, it... Uh, certainly is extraordinarily beautiful. The atmosphere is filled with love and tranquility, and it 
pervades throughout the entire environment. Um, your eyes are stunned by waves of golden light that radiates throughout the entire environment. The light is tangible. Try to imagine that. It's very real. It has a physical presence. And as the light hits you, it tunes you. And, and you can feel yourself being changed for the better, purging you of negative thoughts and emotions. It, it's like existing in this summer land is only possible when you've been purged of all of the heavier emotions and thoughts that weighed you down and 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 forced you to go about your lives uh, mucking about in the physical plane. Um, he uh, then went on to peer through a doorway that he found and he said that there was smells and sounds and feeling as if it was the most wonderful summer day imaginable. Uh, it caused his senses to reel and he felt that he was definitely in a heaven and I can I can back him up on that. I had similar experiences. Um, for all he could see beyond the doorway uh, was bursting with life, with trees, flowers, birds singing. He could see and hear some of these against a backdrop of blue skies dotted with fluffy white clouds. Flowers blossom slowly through the edges, framing the doorway with this beauty that just hung gracefully in the room. There was a smell of perfume that was indescribably intoxicating. Now, I remember this in particular. I don't like perfumes. Uh, you know, I use deodorant that doesn't have any perfume. Uh, I find most perfumes cloying. And unfortunately, people use too much and it's just overpowering the senses. And it becomes, in my mind, extremely negative. But this perfume was best described as intoxicating. It didn't try to overpower this heavenly environment. No, instead it accentuated it. It, it just brought all the senses together in such an indescribable amount of of a brilliant emotion that you felt warm and you felt as if you were taken care of like uh, a baby who is fostered by uh, caring parents. Uh, the, the light uh, would bathe you, as I uh, mentioned, uh, just washing away any, any negative feelings, thoughts, emotions. Uh, you forgot that you even ever had them. Uh, instead, you were just incredibly uh, at peace. Uh, you were um, uh, filled with love. And, and it just, everything was joined together to form this intoxicating beauty. You know, you had the earth, the flowers, the grass, the wood, the trees, the water, the fresh country air, and warmed by this incredible astral sun. Uh, there was gentle waterfalls and streams splashing. There was even sounds of children playing, uh, laughing, birds fluttering, uh, wind gusting uh, through the uh, ancient treetops. Uh, uh, there was just, um, and the, the weird thing about it is that the place as alien as it seems, as I describe it now here in my physical body, it felt very familiar. Uh, talk about deja vu. I mean, have you ever had a sense of deja vu that you go to a place where you have never been before in your lifetime and you visit this, um, this location and everything seems vaguely familiar? Uh, like you've been there before, but for some reason you forgot and it just slipped away from you. Um, 
this particular place, this summer land, this heaven, uh, felt like that. Uh, the only uh, negative mem I mean, basically, it brought back to me the days I spent as a child in the summer running about uh, in, the, in our woods and playing games, carefree, no worries. It, it was just a, p a place where you could dwell in peace and satisfaction, knowing that your work was successfully completed and that you could now lay down your burdens, at least for a time, and exist in this place of absolute peace. Uh, it was, it, it, this was the best description that I think I've ever found that could encapsulate those journeys. Uh, the worst part of the experience was leaving it because eventually I felt the call to return to my physical body. And as I was pulled away from this uh, uh, para paradise, I felt uh, a deep sense of loss and as I was pulled down further and further, uh, when I arrived in the lower astral shortly before I was pulled back to my physical body, the lower astral felt a million times worse than it usually feels. Uh, now it felt like I was this huge body of lead, weighed down heavy in this deeply oppressive environment rather than all these colors and energy and beautiful sounds, there was instead black and grays, uh, depressing uh, emotions uh, everywhere. Uh, I felt weighed down. Uh, it, it, was, it was so much worse because when you're in the physical, the lower astral, definitely doesn't feel great, but it doesn't feel that different from the physical. So if you're used to dwelling in our physical world, the lower astral isn't that bad. However, after having experienced that higher level of vibration, it, it was just so much, uh, so much worse to be existing in that uh, depressing lower astral plane. Well, I was then pulled back to my body. And uh, of course, it felt even worse at that point. Uh, I felt like I, I couldn't move at first because uh, when I awoke, I just, my body felt so heavy that I, that I had a hard time just getting it to move. And I think, as I recall, it required me a few minutes to actually move my physical body. And it was even more minutes as I walked about in the, uh, uh, my, my home that uh, before the actual lethargy finally left me, I guess probably as my vibrational rate readjusted to the level of the physical. Chances are some of that probably vibrated with you too. Even if you have an astral projected, you just may have some sort of deeply repressed memories of a place like that. If you do, please share it in the comments section. I would like to hear your experiences and thoughts and any questions that you have about this uh, higher level astral projection. And um, if you like this, please hit the like button, share it with those of like mine. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, make sure that that uh, bell button's on so you get notified when Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Saturday at 8.15 a.m. Uh, when those podcasts are posted. And that is Eastern U.S. time or New York City time. And as always, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.